We're here on the next step of our Irish Ancestry Trail and we're in Australia and I cannot believe I'm standing in front of that iconic building there behind us. Mm -hmm. Thank you Anne Keating for coming here to meet us. I know you don't live in Sydney. Where, where did you come from to meet us here? I, I live in Brisbane um, and that's um, a couple of hundred miles to the north of here in Queensland. So it takes, it takes about an hour and a half on the plane to get here. Well, I appreciate you making the effort. No and can you tell us a little bit around about this place here? Because yes. I know where we are is really iconic. Yes. Um, and especially Sydney Cove over there. Yeah, that's right. Um, just here, Sydney Cove behind me, is where the first fleet arrived in 1788. The first European settlement on, in this country. Britain was looking for a place to, to dump its criminals, English, Irish, Scottish, Welsh. They, you know, the so prison system at the time was overloaded, was overloaded yeah, yeah. and they needed somewhere. And somewhere on the other side of the world seemed like a good idea, out of sight. <laughs> Out of mind. So the Motley crew arrived and settled here. That's right. That's oh. right. And then after oh, some time they needed another convict settlement and they developed Morton Bay to the north. And Morton Bay settlement is what is now Brisbane. Oh right. So that was Where, the so so you yeah. are now living in what um, was that living, original that's settlement? Right. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, so that was developed for the really tough hardened criminals. Okay. Yeah, very very isolated from from this settlement. But by the time we got to the 1840s, uh, convict transportation to New South Wales had virtually ceased. But somebody came up with the idea of bringing out some convicts and letting them go because really this colony needed labor. So they needed to people. They needed yeah. people. We had free settlers by then and they needed labour to work their properties. So if you came here as a free settler, you were free to start working, yes. develop your own life. That's right. And I imagine yeah. the idea of having land and a place to live for people was very appealing in exactly. the 1840s and yes, later. Yes, exactly. And, so, and did you have a relation that came out around that time? I did. The first, well, my third great-grandfather was Patrick Beeney and he is the, the one that's the furthest back among my ancestors, and my Irish ancestors. And where in Ireland did Patrick Feeney come from? He came from County Longford. And um, what year was it that he came out here? He came in 1850. Okay. And he was, he'd had a career in the British Army and he was then a pensioner in 1849 and they were looking for pensioner guards to bring these convicts out to Australia. So in other words, free trip to Australia, you can bring your wife and your family um, and then you can settle there when you get there. So he did bring his he wife and his children? He did. And where did they settle when they came here? Um? Well, they, they had the choice to get off the boat at Moreton Bay or to come on to Sydney and yes. they got off at Moreton Bay. So they were up that direction? They were up there. But he died 13 years later in Maryborough, which is a couple hours drive to the north of Brisbane. So, you know, he'd had 20 years in the British Army, 22 years in the British Army, and his health wasn't good, you know, he was unfit for service. So he, so he was pensioned off pensioned the, age, the ripe old age of 37. My. 37. He was no longer any use to the British Army. Wow. Yeah, sad. I know that you're very interested in your Irish heritage and you've come to Ireland a few times, I haven't have. you? Yes. How did you find the difference between Ireland and Australia? Well, a lot of things the same. I felt very much at home there. Um, a lot of things familiar, but also, also a lot of strange things. Yeah. But. <laughs> Put it this way, um, once you get used to some of the quirky ways things work in Ireland, it's fine. <laughs> I could say the same about Australia. You you okay, <laughs> so you know, Anne, a, a, an interesting thing came up in conversation yesterday when we were speaking to Linda Scott, mm -hmm. and she said she would like to meet one of her ancestors. And I wonder who would you like to meet? Yeah, well, I would love to meet the daughter of this Patrick Feeney that I've been talking about. His daughter Mary Jane came out as a child, a 10 year old, with her family. 
And seven years later, she's getting married here in Sydney. Uh huh. Um, she puts her age down as 21, but really, she's probably only 17. So you wonder I'd what the story know. is. Did she have mum and dad's permission? You know, why was she getting married in a Presbyterian church when they were Catholic? These. Lots of questions I'd love to ask her. <laughs> so these are the mysteries, aren't they, that draws they us back to the heritage all the time That's and it. checking it out. That's it. Listen, Anne, thank you so much for coming here and meeting us. And um, I'll oh, always pleasure. associate the Opera House with you now and your story. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thanks, Karina.